Hello everyone. This is the elephant bot designed by the Robocon team of NIT Durgapur. Now let's hide its all mechanisms and uh, see its every part in details. So this is the chassis of the elephant bot. It uh, is driven by Omni wheels. It has two main mechanisms, the ring picking mechanism and the ring throwing mechanism. The ring picking mechanism is of two types. One, one mechanism is used to pick up rings from a stack. And the other mechanism is used to pick up pollen rings from the ground. The bot also has the launching mechanism, which is used to shoot rings at desired targets. Now let's see the functioning of each mechanism. So starting with the ring picking mechanism, to pick up rings from a stack, we have grippers. As you can see here, these grippers are driven by a stepper motor. This is the ring stack consisting of 10 rings. To pick up these rings, the angle between the gripper arms is reduced till the gripper arms get a tight hold on the rings. Then it has a servo motor which turns the entire assembly upside down. Now the grippers are also serving as the ring storage rack. The grippers have a push rod. Let's hide the rings. This is the push rod, which is driven by a slider crank mechanism. This slider crank mechanism is driven by another servo motor. Each time the servo rotates by some degrees, the, the push rod pushes one ring on the ring passing conveyor. So let's see the slider crank mechanism. As the push rod pushes one ring, a single ring falls on the ring passing conveyor. The ring passing conveyor then pushes this ring forward, which is caught by the finger like projections of this conveyor belt. As you can see, the finger like projections of the conveyor belt, and the ring gets carried away by this conveyor. And it further rises up and falls down on the shooting platform. In this way, all the rings that are picked up from the stack are passed onto the shooting platform one by one. To pick up rings that have fallen onto the ground, we are using a different mechanism. This mechanism consists of two rollers attached at the base of the chassis. The two rollers rotate in the opposite direction. The front roller rotates in anti-clockwise direction, whereas the back roller rotates in clockwise direction. The anti-clockwise rotation of the front roller pulls the ring, pulls the ring that have fallen inside the bot. And we can see that the ring has been dragged inside. And then the back roller, which rotates in clockwise direction, pushes the ring in the opposite direction and as a result due to the combined force applied by the front and the back roller the ring bends and rises up this ring is then caught by the finger like projections of the conveyor the finger like projections pull the or carries the ring further up and makes it finally fall onto the platform In this way, we can see that a pollen ring is carried up to the shooting platform. So now moving on to the shooting mechanism. The entire shooting mechanism is balanced on three caster wheels. As you can see the three caster wheels here. The stepper motor, which is fixed to the chassis, enables rotation of the entire shooting platform about its axis. As you can see, 
the stepper motor enables rotation of the shooting platform about its axis. It, it has two pneumatic actuators. which is used to raise the height of the platform. This increases the height of projection of the rings. The shooting mechanism has a lead screw at its front and the lead nut is attached with the shooting platform. The lead screw is driven by a stepper motor. This enables to change the angle of projection of the rings. It also has a camera whose angle is controlled by a servo motor and also a LIDAR sensor. These have been used to locate targets and project rings at them precisely. The shooting platform has got an arm which is used to push the rings that comes to the shooting platform. This arm is controlled by a motor which moves it and pushes a ring that falls on this platform. This brings the ring in contact with this roller. The roller then drags the ring along with itself and projects it with high speed and in this way the ring is shot out. Here is the emergency switch for the elephant robot. It is placed in an easily accessible location so that in case of any emergency or failure, we can turn off the robot immediately. Thank you. So hello everyone. This is the rabbit bot made by the Robocon team of NIT Durgapur. Let's have a 360 degree view of it. The bot has three main mechanisms. The ring picking mechanism, the climbing mechanism and the throwing mechanism. So let's start with the climbing mechanism. The bot, the bot has got two legs. As you can see, the two legs which are painted in a red color. The legs are shaped similar to that of screw jacks. We have seen to lift objects. The two legs, the two jack legs are interconnected with each other through a link. The motion of the two jacks are achieved with the help of a lead screw. The lead nut is present in this link which is attached with the link with the help of a bearing. Rotation of the lead nut leads to the opening and closing of these legs. The rotation of the lead nut is achieved with the help of a stepper motor which in turn drives a pulley. So here we can see that the two legs are unfolding till the foot of the legs touch the ground. The foot presses the ground and due to the reaction force, the body of the bot rises up. As you can see that the body of the bot is rising up as the legs are unfolding. The body of the bot is raised to such a level when the entire chassis means the wheels of the bot has risen above the race platform. The bot has got two belt driven linear actuators which moves a slider. The slider we can see it in green color. The slider is attached with the chassis. So motion movement of the slider enables the movement of the chassis. And we can see that the chassis moves forward till the end. Now the slider has got a telescopic slider attached with it which is controlled with the help of a pneumatic linear actuator. This telescopic slider pushes the chassis body furthermore outside. So we can see that the pneumatic linear actuator is pushing the telescopic slider outside. After this, we move to the back. Here there are two caster wheels. These caster wheels are then lowered, which are with the help of linear actuators. The two caster wheels are extended 
till they touch the ground. So after the castor wheels have touched the ground, the legs are now folded back. So now the legs have folded back to their original position and now the entire rabbit pot is supported by two caster wheels and two omni wheels at the front of the chassis. Now the omni wheels at the front of the chassis starts moving. As a result, it pulls the entire chassis forward till the caster wheels hit the wall of the race platform. So now we can see that the chassis body has moved forward till the race platform hits the caster wheels. The caster wheels are now retracted back to its original position. Now the linear actuator which is driven by the belt mechanism pulls the pulls itself back to its original position. And in this way the entire chassis climbs up the race platform. So now moving on to the ring picking mechanism. So this is the ring stack uh, having 10 rings which needs to be picked up by this rabbit bot. For picking up rings there are two grippers as you can see here. The motion of the gripper is controlled by this stepper motor which uh, drives the rack and pinion gear which is inside this gearbox. And which in turn moves the gripper arms. To pick up rings from this stack, the angle between the gripper arms is at first reduced until it gets a tight grip on the ring stack. After that, the lower jaw of the gripper is lowered as you can see till the lower jaw touch touches the lowermost ring of the ring stack. This is achieved with the help of two double acting pneumatic cylinders or one on each gripper. These pneumatic cylinders also have telescopic sliders which enable, which enable the lower jaws to extend to the required length. After that, the lower jaws again retrace back to its original position. So when the lower jaw retraces back to its original position, it picks up the entire stack of 10 rings with itself. In this way, the entire ring stack gets picked up. So after this, the entire gripper arm is turned upside down. This motion is achieved with the help of this servo motor. <coughs> so you can see that the entire ring stack is turned by an angle of about 135 degrees. So here the gripper also serves as the ring storage stack. The grippers have got a push rod. You can see this here. The motion of the push rod is achieved with the help of a slider clank mechanism, which is driven by a motor. The push rod pushes one ring out of the stack at a time. <coughs> so now the question is how to put the rings into the poles. So for this, we use the jack legs of the bot. So at first the jack legs are lowered and after that the legs are extended further which pushes the bot upwards. So in this way the bot is raised up till a certain height. This is the pneumatic cylinder here, pushes the ring passing conveyor or further up. Then the push rod pushes one ring on this ring conveyor. So we can see that the ring falls onto this ring conveyor. The ring conveyors are driven by a motor whose speed can be adjusted as and when required. The ring conveyor then drags this ring upwards 
it drags the ring forward and so finally the ring is thrown into the pole so this is the ring throwing mechanism of the rabbit bot here is the emergency switch for the rabbit robot it is placed in an easily accessible location so that in case of any emergency or failure we can turn off the robot immediately so this is the rabbit bot all the mechanisms have been described thank you